Hey everyone, welcome back. Just before we get this episode started, I did want to let you know we do have some bonus content at the end of the episode, so stick around for that. And in the meantime, enjoy this long-awaited episode on I'm Thinking of Ending Things and Kid A. Enjoy! Come on, come all. It's the new show on the new network. It's called One for the Other. What up, pimps? (laughs) What up, pimps? We're back after three weeks. We're back. Uh, Thank you, uh, all of our fans, um, for showing great concern over our absence. We got many emails, many, Mm -hmm. many Instagram tweets about, you know, hey, you guys, you can't just stop giving us the best entertainment on the internet. What the hell? Yeah. Um, So we decided after weeks and weeks of guilt to return. Um, So where we left off long time ago, uh, was me recommending a record to listen to and Josh recommending a movie to listen or <laughs> to watch and also listen to. Yeah. Um, so this week <laughs> I recommended the, what do I call this? 2001, I'm just going to say release from the legendary rock band Radiohead. Um, Kid A. Um, this is one of my. F- this is probably my second favorite uh, Radiohead record, and I know you have listened to In Rainbows, and I feel like this would be a good one to move on from and listen to, because Radiohead is for big boys with small weens, and that is us. That's us, baby. <laughs> That's us. So, what'd you think? What'd you think of this freaking bleep bloop ass record? Uh, I had a I had a good time with this record. It was um, fun. It's really um, atmospheric. Um, like the, the the soundscape of it is very um, cohesive and um, really, you know. God, it's been a while, hasn't it? That's crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Just like um, as soon as you turn it on, you kind of know what this record's gonna sound like, and it's. It doesn't. It. I wouldn't say it gets repetitive necessarily, but like, mm-hmm. it has that soundscape and it sticks to it, and I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I could turn on the record and I knew what it was gonna be like, and I could like, if I didn't, I knew exactly when I didn't didn't want to listen to it because I was like, this is what right. this record sounds like, and it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really, really super cohesive in how it displays emotion and how it displays you know just that really kind of sterile um feeling that i get from this record like it's really robotic and just kind of i don't know just generally um wow really has been a long time (laughs) i can't use my brain words um no yeah just like literally the first four notes of this record are Ear candy to me. Mm. If you listen to the boom, 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 it's like, oh yeah, oh baby, oh. we're in for a fucking nightmare. Just kidding, it's not a nightmare. It's um, it has nightmare parts. I would say, you know, a lot of these tracks tend to descend into madness. Like the one that immediately comes to mind is the national anthem, which definitely has some cool sim- symbolism and whatever um so i love that shit where it just fucking does like um the end of the fuck is that beatles song uh, day in a life yep you that's know that's what i was gonna say yeah where it just like totally fucking goes nightmare orchestra on you there's a few tracks that do that on here and there's a lot of other tracks that have weird tape loops that are like reversed and unreversed and you know it actually reminds me a lot of the Beatles and what they did in records like Magical Mystery Tour or the White Album, where they were just fucking with different tape effects and different, um, you know, pedals and shit and how that impacted the the recording. Uh, but this is just a definitely more modern take on it, where yeah. they're using synths and things instead of, you know, tapes and moogs and shit. Yeah. It's you know it's funny that you say it feels like 
robotic it felt spacey to me like i felt like i was floating mm. anytime i listened to it like i could just mm-hmm. just go off into that it was the perfect music to skate to because i could just like mm-hmm. feel the fluidity of being on the board and like just weave and like uh, yeah yeah it's it's real good and i love how there's there's tracks for everyone here mm-hmm. there's tracks for like those more traditional radiohead fans like optimistic or how to disappear completely but then there's there's weirdo tracks like kid a or uh idiotech idiotech's probably my favorite track just because of how like fucking aphex twin it sounds to me oh it's so good fuck did gee darn it thomas thomas york (laughs) thomas you've done it again fucking yeah and what's really weird is and it's weird because it's good is how well it all kind of flows together like the flow of the Mm -hmm. album listening to it all the way through it's it's clear like that um they were methodical and like where they put things and how songs lead into another because it it's not like like they're each individual songs but it's still like a very like we said like cohesive like it all goes together really well it it doesn't feel like you're yeah. jumping around too much or um sudden shift in what we're what you're doing it j- feels like like it makes sense where everything is yeah totally it's just so intentional like that was that that would be the word that i would use to describe this record is intentional and that describes a lot of what radiohead does and has been doing for many years but oh man it's it <laughs> I don't know. What else do we fucking say about this? Song? I don't. It's so that, good. I only had one <laughs> note, and it was for this. So, and I didn't even say it. I don't even care. Um, what about the lyrics? Did we? Did you pay attention to those? Did you read those at all? Because I didn't. No, I um, like. I don't know. Like the lyrics didn't feel like the most important part of this. Just with mm-hmm. the the soundscape that it was, it felt more yeah. instrumentally powerful than vocally powerful. And Tom York's voice is is beautiful, and he uses it very well in this. Um, mm-hmm. But it, like, it's just another. It, it's more instrumental than it is a, a piece of vocal. Like I really enjoy that stuff, and like it's just used in a different way. And uh, just kind of serves to complement that and provide that little bit um, to like you know keep my ear there and be listening to more mm-hmm. than that instrumental, but still like it doesn't take that precedence like it does with um, a lot of other like music that I listen to. Yeah, totally. It's not. It's 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 engaging, but it's also a passive listening experience. I feel like. Yeah. You're not really. You're not really captured or captivated by the sound. You're not. You're you're not gonna cry to this. Well, you might cry to some of the songs, but you could cry. You know, to me, you. I mean, you can cry anytime you want. I don't give a shit. I go for but a cry right to now. me. <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna take a cry break. Uh, give us like twenty minutes. Uh, we may or may not be back. Absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's no one else in this apartment right now. The silence is just deafening. <laughs> The silence and also Kid A by Radiohead is deafening. Please turn it down. <laughs> the neighbors can hear. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> right into it. Um, yep. I'll I'll give it a, a nine out of ten. Oh shit, boy! Hey, but oh shit, boy! So man, you crazy. Uh, Seth Rogen tier? Just a whole different <laughs> yeah, list? I <laughs> put it in the movie tier list. In the Seth Rogen tier. Um, no, let's put an S tier, definitely. Um, do we have to kick anything out of S into A, though? See, I want to put it in A tier. Wow, you're nuts. Why? I don't know. I just feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's definitely better than Yeche, even though I love Yeche. Yeah. Put J in A, and then this in S. Oh, what are we, are we going to move something out of B? Out of B? Yeah. Am I looking at the right list here? I don't, I don't know. Sure. What list? Okay. No, I'm not. What the fuck? Here we go. I mean. Okay. I was looking at a different list. We, we have a set number regardless of which one. That's kind of the shtick. I know it's been a while, but that's kind of how tier lists tend to work. 
No, no, no. Okay, let me let me rethink this now. I mean, we could just leave it in V and just break the rules. It is our shit. <laughs> it is our shit. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Fuck it. Okay. Fuck it, man. I don't give a fuck. You can't see me, but I'm dancing. I'm I'm grooving. I can hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Look at that waveform. Ooh. 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 (coughs) Oh, wait. All right. What what the fuck did we watch? Uh, This week, um, for the past three weeks, just nonstop on repeat, (laughs) we watched... um, Charlie Kaufman's I'm Thinking of Ending Things, um, which is a movie that I um, kind of had some interest in. I remember seeing like the preview for it on Netflix before it came out, and I was like, that seems kind of neat. And I don't remember my exact thought process anymore because I got to kick that shit out. It's like a secure credit card system. Run that and then gone forever. Um <laughs> And, but, um, you know, Kaufman did it and we did Being John Malkovich, which Kaufman wrote. Um, he also directed this one as well, but, um, yeah, it has elements of magical realism. So I thought that was neat and it's Kaufman. So yeah. What'd you think? Okay. This movie's freaking wild, (laughs) y'all. This movie is ape shit, but not ape shit in the way one would traditionally think ape shit. Um, spoiler alert, by the way, since this is a brand new movie. Yeah. I mean, it came out like September. It's November at this point. Okay, it didn't come out in 1989. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> People might not have seen it for years and years. But, um, yeah, from the moment this movie starts, it puts you in a just kind of uncomfortable viewing experience. Like, quite literally from the moment she enters the car. It's like, why, what conversation is this? Why are they having this conversation about this? And why is it changing so much? Throughout the whole movie, I just was asking myself, why? Why? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is happening? Why Why is she old now? Why is she young now? Why are there a bunch of Dairy Queen cups in the dumpster? Well, who's this lady at the ice cream shop? And then at the end, it didn't answer anything, so I had to look it up. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> I I understand it now. <laughs> Wait, I didn't look it up, so let me. Okay, yeah. What do you think? What do you think it, it it's about? Okay, so I don't fully know. I will agree that I mean it's even before the car scene, like when she's on the mm-hmm. sidewalk. It's like fuck you. Here we go. <laughs> um, but right. I think uh, so. It's about. Here's what I think. Okay, it's him. The, the guy in it who has a name, but I forgot. She doesn't have a name. Even in the credits, right. she's listed as young woman. Um, right. But it's him, and he's the janitor trying to remember the day that that relationship ended. But because it's been so long, he can't quite remember it correctly. So he's going through these variations of it, of maybe this is what we talked about. Maybe this was her name. Was my mom this old? Was this happening? Was this what the problem was? I don't know what that fucking ending means when she gets Mm -hmm. into school. Once they enter the school, all bets are off. And also, (laughs) I think some of it, I thought for a while, up until the school, like when they first get Uh into the school, I thought it was her because yeah um like from her perspective looking back because it seems like it's very intuitive into like what she thinks so Mm. maybe it's a combination but i'm pretty sure it's him looking back trying to remember what went wrong and like decipher it and it's just been plaguing him all these years and he's slowly going insane right okay cool so that's kind of where i was at the end until i looked it up and that's kind of close so basically I might have to relook it up just so I can hear. Okay, so essentially the story is being told from the aspect of the old guy, the janitor, right? Right. And um, the kid from Breaking Bad, uh, Jake, that's his younger self or whatever. Right. But the girl does not exist. The girl is a fantasy he's made up in his mind because he's a very lonely, sad man. So... He's he has this fantasy of what happened if he were to bring home a girl and the perfect moment at which to bring home a girl to his parents, but he can't think of a perfect time 
So it keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And that's why the girl is so like, just not questioning much. I mean, she's confused, but like when she's talking to, you know, like she's talking to the, the old lady dying in the bed and then, you know, a much younger version of her, she doesn't really question that it's because she's a figment of the old guy's imagination. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like mine better. (laughs) I do. He explains it better. He explains it better, but that's kind of the gist. That's no, I don't care. Mine's better. Mine's what happened. (laughs) None of it explains the end. I don't know. He's insane. Yeah. Essentially he's a crazy person, but, um, yeah, read, just look up Charlie Kaufman explains uh, his movie. He's wrong. And it goes through everything and all the bullshit. But yeah, it's, I mean, even after reading it, it's still fucking crazy and yeah. surreal, which I actually really, really liked. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the symbolism of everything and the, you know really uneasy feeling it gave me it even kind of it had horror aspects definitely yeah um which i'm glad they weren't played up and really tropey because you can you can feel the camp there you know like when she's walking upstairs and she's like you know going into her or his bedroom or whatever and she like can't find him or whatever and then the he comes in with dementia and he's talking about fucking on the twin bed. It's like kind of hilarious. Yeah. Um, but you know, shit like that. I like how subtly it was done. I like how psychologically it was done Yeah. and how just how like Charlie Kaufman doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a single (laughs) fuck about anything. It's awesome. It's super cool. Yeah. It's, I mean, just the, the subtlety of it, I think is, incredible with like you kind of know shit's gonna go wonky if you know anything about this going into it Mm -hmm. but like the way that it like it just kind of shows up in small things and like oh wait that is her name that's calling her on the phone and like see that's also why i thought it was him remembering it because he didn't see the phone so he was like i don't know who would be calling Mm -hmm. her but her or whatever um yeah and um yeah, it's just like, that's her name. And, oh, wait, I thought she studied this. And, wait, I thought mm. her name was that. It's slightly different. Yeah. And, oh, wait, da, da, da. And, like, it definitely ramps up. But it even goes back to it. Like, it ramps up in the house. And then when they leave, it mm-hmm. the story, like, continues more than you'd think. Um, and yeah. they, they keep going with it. But they start doing it differently. So all of a sudden, she's studying a million different things. And then they mm-hmm. stop at the ice cream place and, and, like, go to the school and, like, there's it they keep working with it but looking at it from Uh different ways and like what else could have been misremembered if you think about it correctly or just what else could have been imagined right right yeah god man and he just the whole like ice cream exchange like that was so fucking crazy and weird and creepy and i don't know like this me and Vale were talking about this do you remember when they're getting the the ice cream and the girl is talking about the smell? Yeah. In the ice cream shop? What the fuck is that about? I think that he killed someone back there. <laughs> he straight up murdered someone that worked at that ice cream place. <laughs> he straight murked them. Fucking I don't mm-hmm. I hope not. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. That would have been I think if that if it was revealed that he did kill somebody, it would have made it less sad in a way yeah because it's really really pathetic that even in his fantasy his girlfriend still argues with him and thinks he's a piece of shit you know yeah like his fantasy has control over him and that's really really interesting and how the main character you know is fucking is this the girl it's not the guy it's not the the old version of the guy it's Lucy, Lucia, whatever, Yvonne, whatever the fuck, <laughs> young woman. Young woman. It's this, it's this fucking figment of this guy's imagination. It's really, really ambitious and cool. It's like if Fight Club was done, but it was all told from the, um, the perspective of Brad Pitt instead of Edward Norton, 
it's like, oh shit, yeah. this guy straight up doesn't exist. I mean, spoilers, he doesn't exist. What? But <laughs> didn't that movie come out in like ninety one or something? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Fight Club? Nope. Oh. Josh! Man, if only we had a, a podcast where we listen, where watch we movies and shit. Movies. Um, oh, man. Fucking, yeah, and also, the like they do all this crazy shit, but the attention to like detail and the accuracy of a lot of it, because it is, yeah. even though it's a fantastical world, it's, it's magical realism, so it has to be set mm-hmm. in reality. And like the, that whole trope doesn't work unless you really believe. Like It, it revolves around... Um, the questioning of is something really happening or not and like right what is reality and things that can't possibly exist do affect the real world and all that and so they do that really well like when she's showing him the paintings and his dad is like yeah. just like how do i know what to feel if there's no one telling me what to feel or um mm-hmm. at the very end where it really goes off the rails and kind of abandons the realism part even then yeah. when he's performing i'm assuming that's a song from oklahoma I don't care yeah. about musical theater enough to really check, but <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, I, I assume so because they talk about it the whole fucking movie. Um, mm-hmm. When he's doing that and they're all like old, it's clearly like stage makeup, and it's really cool right. to see that. Like they didn't age them or even bring in older actors; they had them in stage mm-hmm. makeup to look old as he's performing a stage scene. I was like, that's so mm-hmm. awesome! Like I loved seeing that specifically. Yeah, totally. God, yeah, you need to watch this movie like two to three times to fully (laughs) grasp everything. And um, it's... It's, yeah, it's so weird to walk... Like, literally the first thing that I did when I finished this movie, the first words out of my mouth were, what the fuck just happened? What? Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, what the hell? (laughs) (laughs) Showered, went to bed. Like, what? What happened? I don't know what happened. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. Why do I like yeah, this? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. I think it's it's great. I, and even the technical aspects, right? The cinematography, oh. beautiful. Mm. Absolutely, perfectly well done. Effects. The performances, the effects. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh my God, so fucking good. You know what's funny? That actress, she kind of looks like, um, I forget Amy her Adams. name. No, 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 not Amy Adams. We don't talk about her. <laughs> um represent the lady Amy from Adams, uh russian doll natasha whatever oh but, like, right yeah her, from orange is the new black yeah her but like um like wealthy new york instead of like lower class new york <laughs> 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 or like her like if natasha is the natasha romanoff that's her name uh right if she is like new york then the girl from this movie is like vermont <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Oh, yeah, and I like how it's set in a blizzard and everything too. I think that also ramps up the unease and like, oh my god, that fucking part where they're leaving the house. I kept asking myself, I "Was like, are they even driving anywhere?" Because you can't tell. Yeah, it's completely dark, and it's completely like, like how they shot it is from outside of the car with ice and you know the fog on the windows and you can't really see him and she's like smoking <clears throat> in his car and like fucking talking about this fucking movie like <laughs> for so long oh my god and um yeah and like it's and it's the realism too of like if you've ever drone mm-hmm. driven in like bad conditions like that um don't mm-hmm. first of all if you don't <laughs> if you haven't done that don't do it it's bad but it's it's like that like you just you all you see is the snow coming forward mm-hmm. and you just kind of like this looks like the road <laughs> yeah, right right <laughs> <laughs> gps says turn here uh it's all just black so i'm gonna follow that <laughs> <laughs> and fucking oh the scene where she's in the car waiting for him and it's like getting cold like that's actually mm. so tense like yeah, oh i hate that of like do I, should I go in? Should I come back? What's going to be worse for my health? Yeah. Like, that's a... <laughs> and then she gets locked out of the car. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, real... That was bad. That's real tension right there. Yeah, man. That's an emotional response from only people who have dealt with, like, real snowstorms like that. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> and she's asking herself, it's like, 
<laughs> about hypothermia and how long it takes to die from hypothermia. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's funny shit. <sighs> like, this movie isn't funny at all, but there are some funny moments in it. Oh, yeah. I couldn't tell you because I have <laughs> pea brain. But Stored and gone. Do not store any information. <laughs> yeah. In one ear, out the other. Um, yeah, the way they write this dialogue, man. Kaufman, you're fucking... I don't know how he, like, talks to people, but, like, I don't... I don't know. There's so many emotions in every single line of dialogue. Like, it's so many backhanded compliments and so many, you know, awkward exchanges about the weather and about, you know... Like, okay, here's an example. You know, when they're singing the fucking stupid... Or they're talking about the stupid ice cream queen. And then she says something about his mom. And then it immediately switches to, like, wait, you don't like my mom? What the fuck? Like, what about this? What about this? And then she's, like, defending herself and everything. And it's just that immediate tension and getting rid of the tension and then bringing it back. And it... the Oh, my God. It's so unnerving it's so it's scary almost yeah it's gosh it's like um those exercises that people will do of like just recording a conversation to understand like dialogue like that's the whole movie right oh my god and they're like doing the whole talking talking each over talking over each other thing which i love um god. it feels so fake and real at the same time you know the whole magical realism thing yeah it's like, there's no way that they could be having a conversation about this or like, this is not how the conversation would work. But you're also like, eh, I don't know. I've had conversations like that. Yeah. It's like, it's all <sighs> based in reality of like, I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have this conversation, but I can apply this dynamic yeah, in totally. a conversation to moments I've had before. And I know exactly what both of them are feeling right now. Cause it's like these universal situations where you are, you have been on both sides. Right. And there's so many references to different movies and books and ph- philosophies and artists and poets and, you know. Yeah. It's very heady shit that I don't understand, but or, even I yeah. I can apply something to this. Right. I can relate to this in some way. Well, shall we rate this? I'm giving it, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, I think. I think I'm going to do the same. I think I'd put it at a 10 if the ending was more comprehensible. That's fair. I'll agree with you on that. Hello. It wasn't entirely satisfying, the ending, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't disappointing either. Yeah. Which is kind of, I think, the point. I think. (laughs) I don't know. um, Also, did Netflix just not pull up the next thing and you sat through the whole credits thinking there might be something afterwards too? Or is that just me? No. Uh, I just turned off the movie because I was fucking trying, like, rapidly grabbing my phone and trying to figure out what the hell it meant. But he did say something in that article about there's hints about the ending in the end credits. I'm sorry, what? It's just that shot of the daytime. That's all it is. That's what he said. That's what he said. That doesn't fucking help. It was like birds. I don't know. Maybe I was busy talking to myself. (laughs) But, like, the Netflix <laughs> thing where it normally pops up and it's like, how about watch this yeah, next? Right. It didn't pop up, so I assumed maybe there was something after the credits and Netflix was just smart enough yeah. to be like, no. But it didn't. So, fuck you, Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Netflix. That's the moral. Um, let's put this in A tier. Yeah. But move deer down? Oh, God. Um, yeah. You cool with that? They're kind of cut from the same cloth, I feel like. Yeah. I did. But this one confused me more and made me want fi- to figure out more about it. For sure. More. Do we want to move Inglorious Bastards down to sea from there? Hmm. Or Clowns? I don't know. I like Inglorious Bastards and Clowns a lot. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be Clowns. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I know my, my Clowns experience was fucking ruined by watching the trailers, but... <laughs> <laughs> like I still enjoyed it, but it just wasn't as good. I just know it could have been better. Yeah, right. Well, um, well, see ya. All right, <laughs> yep, goodbye. See ya. Well, that's for this <laughs> week. So for next week, I have the record, and I've been plotting yes. this this record recommendation. <laughs> oh yeah. For like a fucking month now, 
it was going to be two weeks old if we had recorded this on time, but we didn't, and I've been not listening to this record solely so that we could do this and it would be a first impression. It is yes. the newest release from Idols, which is a band we both enjoy, called Ultra Mono. Yeah, I'm excited. I finally get to listen to it. I know. I can't wait. There's so much new shit that came out, and I can finally listen to some of it. Oh, so good. They're um. I guess I could, should talk about them. They're a British punk band that does kind of yeah. weird stuff with um punk as a genre, and uh, really cool. They are very progressive with their lyrics and um kind of political and. We both loved their previous release, Joy is an Act of Resistance. So yeah. um, this I've heard great things about this. Uh, they won a record for most vinyl sold in 2020 after like two weeks of this record being out. So Damn. Holy shit. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Good shit. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good one. What are we um, watching? For the, for the movie. For the movie. Um, considering not to date this episode or anything. Considering this weekend is Halloween, I figured we'd do a little bit of a, a spook, man. Ooh, a spooky movie for an episode that comes no, out in, like, in November. November 9th <laughs> is when this comes out. <laughs> It'll be post-spook. If you're one of those people who likes the spooks year-round, you'll appreciate it. But we're going to watch Poltergeist. The original? Yeah. Have you seen that? Mm-mm. Oh, okay, cool, because I have. Yeah, I, I don't know why I haven't seen it, but... I figure that's one I should probably see, right? Yeah, I mean, I watched it because my parents were like, we should maybe watch some of these classics. And we watched Jaws mm-hmm. and Poltergeist. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, our parents are definitely products from the 80s. My <laughs> parents said the same thing. <laughs> like, you gotta watch Poltergeist, gotta watch Halloween, gotta watch the, the, the one you said, Jaws. Jaws. Well, that's why I watched Terminator over the summer before we started this. Because <laughs> they're like, you, want, you haven't seen Terminator? And I was like, no. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why would I have seen Terminator? They're like, it's a classic. It's funny. So we watched Terminator. Yeah, it's like half the movies I've watched is just because of my parents shaming me. Like, <laughs> you haven't seen that movie? It's like, fine, I'll go watch it. Oh, Shit. Fuck. Mm. Fuck off, mom. Um, I'll go watch. Uh, I'll go watch quickly down under. Okay. Fuck. Uh, All right, everybody, go. Go give yourself a blowy. Go give someone else a blowy. And we'll see you next week. And also, like, subscribe, comment, <laughs> follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Has it really been that long? Uh, you know, go to our website, check it out, send us an email. You know, I mean, we're still working through all of the messages about, you know, how, how long yeah, it's been. I mean, but. We'll get to it's your endless. We'll get to your dick pic eventually. We'll get to your website yes. suggestion. We'll get to your movie slash music recommendation. So do that, please. Do that, boy. And remember that you're a pimp. You pimp. See you, pimps. Bye. And I am recording right now. Ah, spooky. Ah, spooky time. We put out one episode this week. <laughs> It's going to be a spooky one. We talk like this the whole time. Hey, no one's going to know this. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the overwhelming lack of any communication about us being gone. Appreciate it. Really great. Really cool. No concerns. Really good. Just nothing at all. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Like three weeks. <laughs> thank you friends thank you family friends family that one guy that commented on the video like two months ago when we gave him a shout out yeah i forgot what he said but i think about you every day i don't even remember his name <laughs> i'm going to jackson uh, uh. Ah! You bastard. You're a fucking bastard. You bastard. You're a fucking bastard. You're a fucking bastard. You're a fucking bastard. <laughs> 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 
When uh, Derek and I watched My Hero, I would just do that to the theme song sometimes. <laughs> just fucking. Just a fucking. Ah, yes. One whole note. Ah, yes. Please. So glad I didn't write any notes for the movie and then did not rewatch it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, We're professionals. Boy. Yes, sir. See, we need to make a podcast with no, no, um, you know, the work to be done. <laughs> Ever. One week we're just going to show up and be like, I didn't even watch it. I, what, what did we even watch? I don't even fucking know. We listened to Possession, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? I think so. So you know how I was going to do paper mache for my Halloween costume? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I tried and it didn't work because oh. it's hard. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, what if I just fucking paint my face? And then I was oh. like, is that bad for you? So I looked it up and I was like, don't fucking put acrylic paint on your face. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? I mean, I could probably do it. And they were like, I mean, don't do it. It's bad for you. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And I went and bought face paint today. Oh, the walk of defeat to Michael's. The Hobby I did Lobby. Go to, I went to Michael's. I called them before I went. And I was like, "You guys have purple face paint?" And they're like, "Yeah, we have a lot." And I was like, <laughs> "Dope." Hell yeah! Fuck yeah, Michael's. Michael. Oh, I didn't. I haven't told you about my harrowing journey to Chili's. Uh oh. <laughs> so this was Thursday, literally mm. last Thursday. And it had been raining here and it had been really cold. Mm-hmm. But I'd been inside all day. And so we got off at 7.30 for mm-hmm. the debate. Or I was off at 7.30 because I was supervising. And um, I don't know why, but it took me like an hour before I was like, I should eat dinner. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was like, I want fried pickles. And I looked at <laughs> DoorDash and DoorDash was like, hey. Chili's has fried pickles, so I was like, all right, I'll get some chilies. Uh, and then it was like, you can get 30% off if you do pickup, and I was like, all right, I haven't left the apartment today, I'll do that. <laughs> and so I set an order, I got fried pickles, I got some quesadillas, I was like, nice. dope. And it was like, it'll be ready at like 9 o'clock, right, right after that, so I was like, okay. And um, I went out a little bit before I had to leave, and my car windshield, all my windows were just ice, and I was like, <laughs> Oop, so I gotta scrape this and I was scraping for fucking while but it was like <laughs> cold and like so much ice like you scrape it and you don't even get to the window the first time <laughs> and uh it was taking forever I was like fuck my chilies is gonna be ready and I'm gonna, <laughs> my I'm gonna be late for my chilies so when I got to the back windshield I was like I'm just gonna scrape a hole big enough to see out of from the rear view window from the <laughs> rear view mirror and I also forgot to do my side mirrors <laughs> So, I drove to Chili's like that, oh, and it boy. was kind of terrifying getting on I-70 right. with that, and then <laughs> I got off I-70, and I was going like over like a bridge, like over the highway, mm-hmm. and I don't know how this was timed so well. It was ridiculous, mm-hmm. but I, I looked down at my speedometer just to check like my speed, and I'm at about 40, and like mm-hmm. as I looked down... I see it shoot up to 55 really quick. And I was like, that's weird. I didn't like yeah. press the gas or anything. And as soon as I finish that thought, I can just feel my car, like the back wheel start to slide out oh, to the side. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, wow! <laughs> so, I left off the gas and I gained control. And I was like, all right, four-wheel drive. <laughs> I've made it to Chili's, got my food, Guess scraped my comes. car off again. <laughs> and he's finished and I drove back and it was like it's just that slick concrete that they use for like overpasses right because I felt it going back at a different spot like I, it didn't my car didn't like lose control like that again I just mm-hmm. felt it as soon as I was on it like I'm on yeah. traction right now <laughs> so that was fun ate dinner at 10 p.m. epic <laughs> what do you want for a dinner why do you have to do this? This is fucking stupid. 
So when you order the 13 fucking tote cookie, you have to individually select each cookie as if <laughs> there's different cookies to choose from, and there's not. <laughs> fucking piece of shit, DoorDash. All right. Give me my fucking nugs, dude. Nugs. Bum, bum, bum. The other day, I ordered DoorDash, mm-hmm. and the, I it was like he's coming, so I was like, all right, I'll just go outside. Mm-hmm. And he came up, and he didn't say anything to me, and left it inside. And so I like waited a minute, so no one thought I was just stealing it, but it was my food. <laughs> and I went and got it, <laughs> and then I woke up, and I had an email. And I, yeah. It was like before my alarm, so I just kind of saw my phone and then went back to bed. And I thought it said, I thought it was someone had emailed me and been like, I know you stole my food. I I saw you steal that food last night. (laughs) And I woke up for real and I was concerned that someone had emailed me like, I know you stole someone's food last night. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't even think, it wasn't even anything real. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, fuck. No, it was my food, I promise. <laughs> you stole your own DoorDash. <laughs> I was upset. <clears throat> I'm going to Jackson. I'm going to Jackson. I know where that is. <laughs>